Hey, everybody. It's your host, Felipe. Once again, bringing you another edition of the Total Basis Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Sean Connery. How are you doing this evening? Oh, I am awesome, man. Baseball is back. Mets win their home opener, somewhat (laughs) controversially. But hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know what he's talking about, we're recording on a Thursday night, and Michael Conforto uh, basically leaned into a pitch with the bases loaded, and that was, that was the walk off right there. Hey, for the that's Mets. hey, they, the Marlins shouldn't have intentionally walked Lindor to load the bases. You're just asking for trouble. <laughs> well, that's what happened. I mean, I'm, I'm good with it. That's three and a half points uh, for fantasy because he got hit by a pitch twice. So I got three and a half points. Uh, the today. Mets are just ball magnets, honestly. Like uh, Conforto, Alonzo, Nemo, McNeil. N- McNeil got hit like seven times just spring training. <laughs> it's like oh, he so- had more hit by pitches than I think like actual at bats. Oh, so like it was, was free. Already, uh, he was already in midseason form, is what you're telling me. Uh, but yeah. Yes. Now people are going to scoff three and a half points. That's 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 petty. Like, well, 3.5 and what? They got five or six games a week. Let's say six games. That's 21 points right there, brother. Yep. That's a good week for Michael Conforto. That's what I'm looking for. So, yeah, uh, a week has gone by in the world of baseball. Uh, and Sean and I are going to br- do some breakdowns of what we've seen so far. And uh, you know what it is, Sean, and if I may. Um, we've planned for this event all this whole week we have we planned for it the entire winter the probably since last october since the last pitch uh was thrown uh by blake snell with a, on a tampa bay rays uniform we, we planned it by then right yeah. we made we did these preparations for the draft we strategized we schemed and we ranked and projected we had guests on we broke down all 30 30 teams and what did that get us, right? It went, everything's going according to plan, right, Sean? Is that what yeah, happened? Yeah, everything. Everything is going according to plan. I mean, I, no, in, all real, in all real honesty, it, Sean, I don't know about you. It does feel like, like it's only been a week, but it feels like it, it, it's, we're already in the dark days of, of, uh, of baseball because of all the injuries that have occurred and all the, uh, well, we already got the COVID stuff uh, right off the bat with the Nationals and the Mets uh, having to cancel uh, games. But it, it does feel like uh, we're in the middle of uh, the season as opposed to the first week of the season, I feel. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it definitely, with some of the key injuries, and I don't know, We I see some guys that are off to really great starts, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's that's definitely legit. And then we have a couple of, you know, relative newcomers to success. Yeah. And this is always the, the hardest part to me about the first, like, two to four weeks of the baseball season is seeing these hot starts and trying to gauge which ones you need to invest in, which ones you need to go pick up off the waiver wire, which ones you need to move from your bench into your lineup and don't even touch them. I mean, this time last year, we were probably talking about, uh, or this would have been uh, in July at the beginning of the season last year, but Colin Moran, you know, he came out and he was just hitting the cover off the ball. We're like, is Colin Moran finally figuring it out? And fast forward to this year, this year, and we're saying, is Tyler Naquin figuring it out? And I never thought I would have to say that sentence, but here we are. And uh, that uh, wanted to point that out. So, you know, I'm in a points league, so I might as well uh, give you the who the top 10 is at the moment. It's the number one, Nick Castellanos, with 43 points on the season already. Yep. J.D. Martinez, Tyler Naquin, who just you just mentioned, Nate Lowe, Ryan McMahon. Ryan McMahon hit the three home runs. We had the three home run game. Uh, and he was obviously the uh, picture of the of the group for Baseball Life, the Facebook group, the best baseball group in all of Facebook. Uh, so what are we? One, two, three, four, five. So we're top five already. Whit Merrifield, number six. My guy, Ketel Marte. Mm! That one uh, hurt. Uh, he's hurt, though. Yeah. So that we got to gotta look at some of the names of guys that might replace Ketel Marte that nobody else is looking at right now. And that one sucks for me because he just got uh, center field eligibility. It's like he, he was one day away from retirement. Uh, he just got <laughs> one. He just got uh, awarded center field eligibility along with second base. And I was already like trying to figure out how to tinker my lineup. And then boom, he's hurt. So you know what that means, Sean? I have to bring out Slappy. Slappy. Tim LeCastro. No, uh, oh. uh, Nick, Nick Madrigal. Oh, yeah. They're both Slappies, I guess, to you. Yeah. But I love Slappy. Slappies work for me. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know how or why, but they do, I guess. Max Muncy at number eight, Will Myers at number nine, and Mike Moostock is at number 10. So that's the top 10 uh, batters. Did you want me to do the pitchers and get it off? Get, get them out of yeah, the way? go ahead and knock the pitchers out of here. 
All right, as soon as this thing loads, uh, you know, CBS is just so slow. I don't know why the, their, their app is. so. But, you know, it was slow for basketball, too, and it, it eventually started picking up. So maybe it's just the, it's, it's the beginning of the season for them as well. Garrett Cole at number one with 45 points. Ter- Trevor Bauer at, uh, at number two. Jake McGee at number three, who uh, is been getting all the save opportunities. And I believe he also got a cheap win for yes, the Giants as yes, well. Yes, he did. Yeah. Uh, is this Valdez from the Red Sox? Cesar? No, I'm C- sorry. For the Cesar Orioles. Valdez from the Orioles. Yes. Okay. He he throws like 85 miles an hour and he just gets saves and it's really annoying because Tanner Scott should be getting them. Uh, that's ex- that's exactly what I was gonna say. But anyway, Mark Melanson, who we talked about <laughs> previously. But hey, it's about those opportunities, right? Zach Granke at number six. Uh, this guy named Brogdon. I don't know who that guy is either. Oh, uh, uh, Connor picture. Brogdon. He was traded from oh the Giants, the, right? Yeah, the Giants to the Phillies, and he's he that. he's already has three wins. <laughs> he has three wins as a middle relief pitcher in like five games. At Absolute number, insanity. At number eight is Shane Bieber. Uh, number nine is Nathan Yobaldi, who's still a free agent, and he's slated to get two pitching starts next week. So. <laughs> Hint, hint. Nate Evaldi is uh, looking. He had a good spring. A lot of people weren't really talking about it, and the stuff's there. And oh, we'll I see. Had him, I had him as a top sixty, top sixty starting pitcher for me this uh, past uh, draft season. So I probably would have said top forty. Yeah. Well, you didn't. So I, I, don't, I, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't I remember you saying anything. How, so. how dare I? <laughs> Uh, and uh, tie for 10th is Lucas Giolito and Tyler Glass now at 34 and a half points. So there's your uh, top 10 after one week of uh, baseball play. Uh, I guess the natural question to ask you, Sean, is of the 20 players I just mentioned right now, hitters and pitchers, which name stuck out to you the most? Nate freaking low. I, he, he's one. And then your mean Mercedes, who I'm not sure was he on your list? No, of, no. That's weird because uh, he is – Probably one of the highest scoring, especially after his home run today. I would think he's had a lot of points to to build uh, up. But Nate Lowe. Stats being... of yesterday, by the way, uh, oh, okay, April yeah. 7th. Yeah, so he hit another home run today because, you know, casually batting 550 with like four home, three home runs. And he's number but... 12, number 12 behind Nelson Cruz. So he, okay. he's on the outside looking in. So. Okay, but uh, Nate Lowe leading the league so far in RBIs with 14. Um, and then right behind him is Tyler Naquin. And Cincinnati, those are, I think, the two really, like, whoa, what are you doing here moments. I mean, T- Tyler Naquin was a guy that we always liked in Cleveland. You know, good speed, kind of the toolsy outfielder, lefty, yeah. so I loved him automatically. But it seemed like him and Bradley Zimmer, they never decided on which one they wanted to give the full chance. And Naquin ended up being traded. Uh, mm-hmm. Nate Lowe was a guy who I thought would have thrived in Tampa. I expected them to trade Choi just to give Nate Lowe full-time uh, playing time. But instead, they traded him to Texas for uh, Herberto Hernandez, a uh, catching prospect. I can't remember his full name. Yeah, but uh, Nate Lowe has just – right now, it's you know it's very early. It's only been six or seven games. But uh, strikeout rate's over 30% in those, but he's batting 320. A lot of the – his bat of ball data looks good. Uh, he's a guy that – when you look at his production, he's always walked. He's never really struggled versus lefties, um, which is big as a left-handed hitter himself. You know, that is a stronger path to full playing time and not being platooned. But uh, a guy that uh, uh, we haven't talked about, and he's already hit a few home runs, but he's striking out and the batting average is low right now. But to keep an eye on is Dylan Carlson. Yeah. Still rookie eligible, uh, has hit three home runs. I believe he hit a fourth today. I I'm, I'm, might have missed it. But uh, that Cardinals lineup, uh, he could move up it very quickly. Dylan Carlson is an interesting name because, uh, he, I mean, I had him listed as a top 40 outfielder on my list. But it, it's like, I think we mentioned this uh, on one of the podcasts maybe before. We want, I want to believe in the Cardinals, but there's just something that's off about them. You know, they have the talent. They have all this uh the notoriety but they're just so damn unstable and uh they're and then their pitching's all over the place so but dylan carlson is a highly rated uh, prospect i know um he didn't get drafted uh too much i don't think i mean let me see here oh it doesn't tell me on this thing shoot i was hoping i can figure out what the cbs says about uh his oh there it is sorry yeah he's only rostered in 84 percent of cbs leagues and only starting in 60 percent so I mean, it's a good number, but you, you would think that if he's off to such a great start, you and what the I mean, prospect... he, it, it's not the greatest start. I mean, he's batting 158, but he's got three home runs. 
and a 632 I mean, yeah. slugging. Yeah. So I was looking at the, how many points he has. He's 23 and a half. You just mentioned Jermaine Mercedes, who has a, he's at 28 in our league. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Despite the low batting average, he's still uh, producing for these uh, points league owners. But like I said, CBS has him at uh, 84% and 60% starting uh, in, in, in their leagues. Um, but again, highly talented prospect out of the, a very decent, good Cardinals organization. Just, uh, can't believe that he's still available in 15% of leagues so far. Yeah. That's uh he would be a guy that I would have been adding like in the draft, like, especially because the way his price fell uh, as draft season went on, I, I don't think it rose. It actually went down. And then right at the very end, when Bader got hurt, I think he started being drafted a little bit higher, but uh, he's a guy that I don't know. You got to play him. He's a Kyle Tucker light. He's going to give you speed, power, uh, a couple of stolen bases, good RBIs. And especially if he gets moved up the lineup to somewhere between like three and four, because the first four in that lineup right now look pretty locked in of Edmund, Goldschmidt, Arenado. But if he moves up to that three or four spot and they drop Goldschmidt or drop Arenado, then he you could be looking at an absolute steal. Yeah, um, hopefully uh... – you know, just it's all about playing time, right? So, if he, and uh, an opportunity, like you just mentioned, if he gets moved up, then things can look very, like, much better for him. But Cardinals, we talk about them all the time. They're pretty deep. They don't, you don't think about them that way, but they're pretty deep, and that's part of the frustration and the caution of uh, Dylan Carlson. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But if he's, you know, I know the traditional numbers don't show it, but if he's off to this kind of a start where he, where he the ball looks like a beach ball at this point. He's just lifting it to the outfield wall. Uh, it's uh, definitely, like you mentioned, somebody to keep an eye on and maybe even uh, put him in your starting lineup before he gets hotter, right? And you want to be yeah. on that first heat wave. Ahead of the uh, curve. Ahead of the curve, right? Uh, the trouble with the curve. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Terrible movie. <laughs> it oh, was. I, I wanted to like it, but it was so bad. Oh, you've seen it, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember uh, Matt Bushnell, I, I he asked me, so how was your weekend? And like, uh, I, I think I was watching some award show and the trouble with the curb was on. And I, I agree with you. It sucks. It's so bad and so cliche. And it's basically uh, Clint Eastwood doing his best Gran Torino impersonation. Like, yeah. Man, get off my block with your fancy computers. <laughs> I think, no, honestly, that's one of the, that's it's one of the Gran Torino, of, but with baseball. <laughs> no, pretty much. And that's one of the, that's honestly one of the lines there. That's one of the lines. Like, why don't you look for a baseball player in your fancy computers there? <laughs> I will do that, Clint Eastwood. Thank you very much. <laughs> We've been doing that. We've been telling you guys who we're getting, who we're picking, who we're uh, eyeing on. We just told you about Dylan Carlson. Who else do you have in mind there, Sean, for uh, uh, guys for that hitters? we need to keep an eye on? Yeah, give me another hitter. Uh, so we, we, we've already touched on, you know, your mean Mercedes, uh, Nate Lowe and Naquin. I guess one that would be interesting to talk about is a guy who could be a potential league winner in terms of your batting stats. And – that's Jordan Alvarez. So far through the first six games, he's got a home run, six or seven RBIs, batting 308, 345, 538. I mean, I'm expecting the on base to be a little bit higher. You know, obviously he's probably not walking as much, only three and a half walk percentage, but we're talking about 29 plate appearances. But the fact that, you know, he's already got the contact there, he hasn't struck out a whole lot yet. Yeah. I, and I've said this before on the show. I think Jordan Alvarez could be a prime Miggy caliber hitter. Oh, wow. And if you have him and he's putting up 300, 400, 580, then that's absolutely insane. And I think that's 100% possible with Jordan Alvarez, not to even count the, all the uh, runs RBIs he's going to get from being in the middle of that very still potent lineup. A guy I'm seeing in front of me right now, uh, Cedric Mullins, uh, who has an on-base percentage of 519. Slappy. Hooray, small, hooray, small sample sizes. Slappy. Oh, he's uh, very slappy. He has a 720 slugging percentage so hey, far. Hey, he, he's one of the best bunters in baseball. I'll, I'll have to look at that. I, I, you know, I, I think he, he, he had a five-hit game and a couple of, like, a triple in there. So that might be skewing a little bit of what you're seeing. But he's a good <laughs> stolen bases guy. Uh yeah. It was kind of looking like it was going to be down to him or Austin Hayes for yeah. that Oriole center field job. And uh, so far with his hot start, Cedric Mullins, he's leading off. And there are potent bats behind him. I mean, I know it's Baltimore and it sounds like a joke, but there are guys like Trey Mancini, Anthony yeah. Santander that are behind him. So if he's getting on base in front of him, he's going to get you uh, stolen bases. 
and playing in that ballpark, even a slappy guy like Cedric Mullins can hit maybe 20 home runs. Cause I mean, if Jonathan VR can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> and no, uh, no, we, we've told you guys about some of the guys that the Orioles have and they're getting better. And you forgot to mention Ryan Mountcastle, who could be a thing. Um, so no, it, it's, um, no, it's an interesting take there. Uh, I'm getting a little distracted because I'm just trying to look at the sacrifice bunts and and Fangraphs is not cooperating with me. But uh, yeah, but aside from Mullins uh, having speed and all that, I mean, he's just been crushing the ball lately. The only concern is that he, ha- compared to the other guys who are on top of this list, uh, he does have a low walk per strikeout ratio. So I'm just kind of concerned that that might come back to haunt him later. Yeah. He's got a six eleven bad up right now, which is fun. To, this is like my favorite part of the year is the <laughs> first like two weeks and everyone in their mother in baseball has a WRC plus over like one eighty. <laughs> I mean, right now we have uh, the two leaders in WRC plus are Nick Castellanos at three seventeen. And your mean Mercedes at 293. It's like just absolutely <laughs> funny numbers. All right, let's, let's take a look. I'm really uh, curious about the sacrifice bunts. Um, let's see. I think it's this one. Sacrifices. Oh, you want sacrifice hits, right? Uh, I, either one. I mean, he, he bunts a lot. Since 2019. And, and Cedric Mullins. Oh, yeah, you're right. Top 12. He's uh, yeah. top 12. But since uh, 2019, you want to guess who your sacrifice hit leader is? Is it a pitcher? No, no, it's a hit. No, it's a hit. It's it, a hit, not uh, sacrifice. So, like, like sacrifice flies? No, sacrifice hits, like bunting to get on base. Oh, um, so. no clue. Okay, it's Adam Eaton, followed by Lurie Garcia. So, another team. Hey, Tony La Russa, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the line of the shields are the only three players with double digit sacrifice hits since 2019. Uh, 12 for Garcia, 12 for the shields, and Adam Eaton is leading. Everybody since 2019 is with 13. And Uh, Cedric Mullins led the league in 2020 with four. (laughs) And he had two Uh, two years before that. If you want sacrifices, uh, this is your typical list of Nolan Aronado, Jose Abreu, Nick Ahmed, Franmil Reyes, Jesus Aguilar, and Eduardo Escobar. So I'm assuming these are, uh, what do you call it? The uh, sacrifice flies, like you mentioned. So Guys who hit the ball in the air and have pretty good contact tools. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Easy to spot the trend there for sure. Uh, Ryan McMahon, we just mentioned Ryan McMahon. Uh, one of the concerns we had about Ryan McMahon was, is he good enough? Well, first of all, will the Rockies realize that he's supposed to be starting for his... Their, well, that, the, that the Rockies have no clue who they're supposed to start. Granted, in the last like three games, Garrett Hampson has let off. Yeah, He's been in the lineup with Ryan McMahon. It's I, I don't want to get my hopes up too much because then they'll end up signing like some random person like Puig's probably going to go out there and take Hampson's job. Chris Owings is still going to be playing for some, whatever God reason it's maybe they'll check for rope needle door, but yeah, (laughs) no, they're, they're too late to that one. But um, (laughs) Ryan McMahon, I I was talking about uh, with this on another analyst on Twitter. And I was like, I get kind of like Max Muncy vibes. Wow. And you look at the numbers and he posts high walk rates, not as high as Muncy's, but his issues have always been a strikeout rate. They've been bordering right around 30% the last few years. And it's one of those where if the skill change, he strikes out just a little bit less then playing in that ballpark with his power could be huge. So it, it, he's definitely a guy I'm going to keep an eye on. And that was part, that's all, everything you just mentioned was the allure of Orion McMahon during the off season. The only bad thing about him was that you mentioned the strikeouts and the playing time and will the Rockies get with there? Brent, with Brendan Rogers being hurt. I believe Ryan McMahon's been playing most of his time at third base this year. Okay. I could double check, but when Rogers went down, he was the one um, in 2021. He's played three games at third and three games at second. So uh, split in, the difference. Interestingly enough, you mentioned Max Muncy, uh, according to offensive runs above average, uh, the fan graphs offensive metric for the, for the, for their version of war Ooh. wins above replacement. So Ryan McMahon's number eight right now in offensive runs above replacement. Number nine is Max Muncy. So hmm. interesting. Right now you just mentioned it, McMahon, Ma- Max Muncy vibes. Vibes, sorry. Uh, there's Tyler Naquin at number ten. Nelson Cruz at number eleven. Uh, yeah, there's Chris Owings. You just mentioned him uh, at number thirteen. Um, is he playing enough? Okay, so he's not playing as much as Ryan McMahon, but it's enough where he's uh, Chris Owings and Garrett Hampson are fighting for playing time right now in center field. 
what a world we live in now. <laughs> uh, Will Myers is at number 15. That's uh wow. That's not what I expected from him, but you know, I think it's all the injuries in, in uh, San Diego. That's um, kind of guaranteed him a lot more playing time. Yep. So he's off to a good start. He already has a stolen base as well. Um, who he's else? sneaky stolen bases. Will Myers, Christian Vasquez. I believe he's the number one uh, catcher. In all of Major League Baseball, he got off, uh, he got off to a really hot start last year too. I'm yeah. not, I, I don't buy it at all. Hey, he has one stolen base though. He had like seven stolen bases in 40 games last year, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna run a bunch." Uh, maybe I'll be putting my foot in my mouth in two months here, but I just uh, I don't know. Don't don't like him. Can't do it. Uh, so Christian Bass is number 21. At number 23 is your guy Will Smith. Getting jiggy with it. Uh, both he has can- been so good. Nobody wants to talk about him, though. He's so good. Yeah, because he has to uh, split time with Austin Va- Barnes. But- uh, you can't tell me if he keeps it up like this. Like, Austin Barnes is not going to play. I don't know, man. I think, you know how the Dodgers like to mess around with their lineup, and there's a reason why Barnes is still on that team, despite the fact that he can't, he can't produce offensively. He can't do much of anything except be the defensive wizard that he is. And that's going to cut into Will Smith. But, you know, I'm a Will Smith owner in my points league. I've been satisfied, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, Jared Walsh, uh, we talked about him in the offseason as a guy that might do something about something. And Yeah, he's uh, going to he steal the first base job from uh, Albert Pujols. Uh, so from what far, I hear, it's not that hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Exit velocity of 90.2 miles an hour so far as of uh, yesterday. Uh, who is Philip Evans? Philip Evans, that's a former Mets farm journey hand. He was uh, – in the 2016 season when the Mets made the wild card and they like everyone and their mom was injured, Philip Evans came up and he got a couple of cups of coffee in 16, 17. He got off to the really hot start last year with Pittsburgh. And then he broke his jaw on a collision. He was batting like 330 for Pittsburgh last year through about 20 games and broke his jaw. And now he wasn't going to play a whole lot because Cabrian Hayes obviously happened. But then Cabrian Hayes got hurt, and Philip Evans just inserted himself into the lineup and is mashing again. And of all hitters with uh, 10 plate appearances minimum, he is at, I just saw his name, 12th in WRC Plus uh, at 264. So, yeah, there's that. (laughs) Uh, He's he's a hitter. He's one of those, like, he just hits. I don't think he's going to be a huge power hitter, but he just, he's got the hit tool. And it's, it's fun to watch. Uh, he's already looks like 28 years old. So, uh, hey, Jeff Bloomer, McNeil sorry. was 28 years old or 27, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Your mean Mercedes is what, 28 years old? Yeah, he's 28 years old. There you uh, go. 28 journey. years old is a really good. I, I'm, you know, I turned 25 in a month here. So I'm, I'm just w- looking forward to 28. Maybe something good happens at 28, right? Uh, well, like I tell you, in baseball terms, uh, 28 is a new 33 years old, brother. <laughs> Uh, let's see what happened. What was I doing when I was 28 years old? I was, I was doing this. Well, not this exactly. I wasn't, I didn't have my own podcast. Well, yeah, 28 years old, uh, actually, uh, 2011, I think I was 28 years old in 2011. Uh, I was going to, uh, one punk rock show a month, <laughs> but no, and- Will Smith with a one-to-one strike. I hate to interrupt, but strike out the walk one-to-one two home runs already in five games. He's an absolute stud. Uh, just wanted to, by the way, if I were to go to one punk rock show every month at my old advanced age that I am right now, uh, I, I wouldn't be doing a podcast right now. I'd be in the hospital. <laughs> my knees, my knees, my shoulders, my head, knees and toes, knees and toes. You'd be spending more time going to the doctors than Aaron judge. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon, man. Uh, speaking of injuries, uh, Melvin, who's uh, nice enough to uh, chime in today, tonight, uh, him of the baseball cosmos, uh, base, uh, Facebook page. As Fernando Tatis, Trevor Rosenthal, and Adalberto Mondesi, uh, and he's out of IL spots, so he's that's, at that point. That's where... a that's a and it's a I think it's a redraft. When I was looking at the comments, we've been super active in the comment section tonight, guys. So I just want to thank you guys so much for that. Uh, John Gray said Brandon Nimmo is also 28, and Brandon Nimmo's off to a outrageously hot start as well. We can't go through an entire TVP episode without mentioning <laughs> uh, the goat of baseball that is Brandon Nimmo. A 35% <laughs> walk percentage and a 571 on base. You know, hey, he can do that all year. Uh, Melvin also let us know that he has Kyle Lewis as well. Like, oh, why do you God. Have, That's... Why do you have Kyle Lewis, number one? And number two, uh, you can find a replacement him it was funny i was looking at the injured report last night uh, getting ready for this show and i should meant to take a picture of it and tag the guy who runs 
roster resource on fan graphs. But uh, Martinez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he has Adalberto Mondesi on the Los Angeles Angels. Yes. <laughs> I saw that and I said, if only that was in real life, can you imagine when Mondesi would be being picked? Like how many times he would get knocked in by Trout and Rendon? Oh my God. First overall pick, Alberto Mondesi. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs one Soto? I'll take Mondesi. Oh, geez. Uh, speaking of which, uh, John Gray did mention Akil Badu, and he's oh, next yes. on the list. Have you been watching, keeping up with what he's done so far? Every time I tune in to you guys and the Baseball Life Facebook group, you guys tell me he hit another home run. So, yeah. So his first major league pitch came in the second game against Cleveland. Hit a home run on the very first pitch. Mm -hmm. And then the next game after that, he hit a grand slam. They had gotten blown out, but it was a ninth inning grand slam. Uh, and then the day after that, uh, walk off single. And then the day after that, uh, RBI triple. <laughs> I mean, he, it's like every single day he's doing something new and he's, you know, two home, two home runs, one stolen base so far. He's a guy that if he digs into Jacoby Jones or Victor Reyes is playing time, which you would think is possible as long as he's hitting, uh, he could be a 15-15 guy. And the interesting thing with him so far is both of his home runs, have he's a left-handed hitter, have gone to left field. So whenever I see a lefty that can hit a ball out of Detroit to left field, which is a little easier to do compared to right field, but I don't know. I, li I like the profile for sure. Yeah, 52.5% swing rate according to Fangraph. So he's, a, he's a, an aggressive guy there. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, usually those aggressive guys get uh, – Figured out push, pretty quick. <laughs> push, yeah, push well, down back if, to earth If you a look bit, yeah. at his uh, minor league track record, uh, in 2019, he only played in high A ball for 29 games. Yeah. Uh, and he had a 30% strikeout rate. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, – regression's okay. probably coming for Akil Badu. But, yes. hey, it's fun. It's fun to watch. 15% uh, uh, swinging strike rate as well. So, that, that's, that's – uh, no, I mean, that that's high. That that's, is high. Yeah. That's pretty high. But Higher. it's not like Keston Hero right now, who, oh, we'll as we move on bit. to some of the guys who are making pretty slow starts, Keston Hero finally got his first hit, I believe, today or yesterday. Yeah. He was 0 for 21 with like 14 strikeouts, and his swinging strike percentage was over 30. Like it was an <laughs> absolute insane number. But Keston Hero is a guy who I liked him. We've talked about him before. I liked him when he came up because he had this real, like, good bats and ball profile. And then he started selling out for power and the strikeouts just skyrocketed. And I don't want anything to do with him if he's got a strikeout percentage over 35, 30 yeah. percent. I mean, that's only person I maybe do that for Joey Gallo. Like that's that's one of the few guys. And this year, uh, yeah, he's yeah, he, so he got his first hit today. He went one for four with a double still struck out. Uh, that makes him one for 24 on the season. And his swinging strike I had pulled up right here. Uh, no, that's gone. Darn it. I just had it pulled up, and then that one's gone. Uh, 33.7. It was 34.1. Oh, that's his called swinging percentage. They keep moving crap around. 27%. 27%. Yeah, so. Uh, I, I don't know. He's a guy that everyone still hyped him up. He was a top 100 draft pick. And yeah. why? <laughs> there hasn't been a skills change to – remedy the issues that caused him since he's been promoted. Like I, I guess for stolen bases, but I mean, he, he's only stolen 12 bases in the last 140 games of his major league career. So it's like, I, I don't know. He's a weird player that people are, are into right now. That is off to a very slow start. Is there anyone in your mind so far that is off to a slow start that you were not expecting? Uh, before I move on. And you were talking about Kessin hero, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, you know how I feel about Kesson Hero. I had him as my top three second baseman, and when it came time to draft, uh, he went very late and a lot later than I expected. I couldn't pull the trigger in both of our drafts, uh, this one and then the points league. So it looks like I made up dodge a bullet there. But uh, before I move on to the guys on the dip, I wanted to mention one more guy on the rise, and that's Michael A. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, not this again. Not this again. <laughs> Just when you think you're out, you bring, I mean, it brings you right back. Uh, Michael Taylor has a, a soft spot in my heart because uh, one of the first uh, names I, I was doing to get my writing career going was uh, trying to break down Michael Taylor back in 2012, 2013, around there. And uh, he was a prospect for the Nationals. So every time I see Michael Taylor, I get, I get a little bit excited. Him and Brian Goodwin. 
I get a little. Oh, Brian Goodwin. I like. I I preferred Goodwin. You know why? Uh, Because he just wins good. He was a lefty. Uh, Michael Michael, Michael (laughs) Taylor's a righty. I, I, I if I. Give me a, a choice, and I'm always going to pick the lefty. Well, I always kept an eye on them just to see if anything, if they would materialize into anything. And there's Michael Taylor with the he's on with the perfect team right now with the Royals, and also a really good start. I it, it's more of a mirage than anything. And I picked them up in our fan league because I wanted someone uh, to replace Juan Soto because I there was rumblings that he was hurt even after the Nationals got shut down because of COVID. But uh, no, he Michael Taylor was picked up and. Uh, I didn't realize that even at his old age, uh, you know, relatively old age, he's 30 now, but age 29 and 28, he's still one of the fastest guys um, in all of baseball in terms of yeah. sprint speed. Yeah, the, the speed really, for some reason for him, for a guy that has dealt with injuries, like yeah. his speed is still there. And it's uh, kind of odd to see, but he, he's off He's off to a hot start. I'll, I'll concede Michael Lay Taylor, although yeah. he's not the guy that I want to see in the outfield for them. Well, I want to, I want to see more of Isbell. I want to see Edward Oliveras. It's oh, just yeah. Michael A. Taylor just doesn't do it for him anymore. Well, the thing about him is that he's 6'4", and it's just crazy to think a guy of that big, of that of his stature, would be that still one of the fastest players in all of baseball. But you know why I also did it, right? As much as I make fun of other people for chasing steals, uh, if you're going to tell me he plays with the Royals and has that big of a sprint speed uh, metric, yeah, uh, that, 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 that team's going to run. Bases. Yeah. That, that team is going to run. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. I I, I know that it, everything about him says fluke, but that that speed is legit. So it might be worth keeping an eye on for sure. But you, you know what you have to do to get stolen bases that he's really not good at? You have to get on base. You yeah, have to get to yeah. first base. <laughs> A little bit of Billy Hamilton. In, in yeah, the just way. just slightly. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, uh, he has a career high at 320 and 2017 with the Nationals, uh, on base percentage. So that's, that's not the best. 17, well, he stole 17 <laughs> bases that year. So, you know, some hope there. So you just need to get on base a little bit, maybe 33% of the time. And I think you'll be fine, but we'll see what happens. Now you, you on the flip side, wanted to see some bad players, right? It was the players who have been letting you down. Yes. Uh, I see. Well, you I, have, I have an interesting list sorted by uh, WRC plus in the wrong direction here. But yeah. uh, if, if I, one pops to your head, go first. Okay. Well, I, I have it. I have the offensive runs above replacement, but in the opposite direction. So these guys are all in a negative. Yes. And uh, Eduardo Escobar is a name. I, and that guy, and you know what? Let me, let me, uh, I have a, my mind is running a mile a minute, but number one, you mentioned Keston Kira. He's listed as a 788th uh, best player in terms of offensive run, uh, uh, run offensive <laughs> runs above replacement. Right? Yeah. Uh, and this list is, is out of 790 players. Elvis <laughs> Andrews is dead last. In the middle of the Hura Andrews sandwich is Eduardo Escobar, who, what do we always say about him? Is he Eddie Rosario or Eduardo Escobar? I can't tell the difference. <laughs> They're the same guy. If, if the- he really is this bad, because he was bad in 2020, if he's just like bad, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a drop off as severe as his was as fast as his was. Cause in 2019, he was a 30, he was hit 35 home runs and had 118 RBIs. Didn't walk a whole lot. Didn't strike out a whole lot. He just hit for power and solid average. He was kind of like a poor man's Francisco Lindor minus the stolen bases. But, and then in 2020, he was terrible. And yeah. so far to start 2021, he's terrible. And I mean, he is 32 years old. <clears throat> there could be a slight age component there, but it's just crazy how fast it seemed to come up yeah. on him if this truly is the end of Eduardo Escobar. And not just that, the only reason that Escobar also kind of pops off for me is that in the points league I keep mentioning, uh, my buddy Matt Bushnell, the Audible, uh, I just noticed, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, that he just dropped them recently. So he's had enough of him after one week. So. John John Gray's already ahead of us. He he picked the guy that I was going to pick next, and that's uh, Ozzie Albies. Mm-hmm. Ozzie Albies is batting 091 uh, through the first season. He does have a 111 BABIP, so that's obviously something's going to catch up there. But uh, it's the same reason I just don't trust him against right-handed pitching. Yeah. And uh, so far to start the season, uh, he's two for 22 versus right-handed pitching. And that's... I, I worry about the skill set because he's he's never proven to be a, a above average hitter versus right handed pitching crushes lefties absolute monster versus lefties. But uh, if he continues his struggles, I see him getting bumped down the lineup. And if he's suddenly batting in between 
uh, Austin Riley and <laughs> Christian Pache. I, that doesn't do the same thing for me as no. hitting between Freddie Freeman and Marcelo Zuna, who is another guy who is off to a slow start. And ever since my last appearance with um, John Leggezi from MLB Moving Averages, but he had a tweet of that. It was Mark Canna, and it shouldn't be better than Marcelo Zuna because the shredder said so. <laughs> and But when you compared them, their last two seasons, they're actually pretty close. And so in my mind, I'm just going to keep this going all year long is a comparison of Mark Canna to Marcelo Zuna to see where they end up. Cause I would really love it if Mark Canna ends up ahead of them. Oh God. That, uh, well, you mentioned Albies. Uh, he is the 785th uh, best player in terms of offensive runs above replacement. Uh, according to fan grabs, he's tied uh, for that spot with Martin Maldonado. Uh, but behind those two guys is uh, Trevor Story. who uh... and, and Trevor Story was a guy that I was going to bring up as well. Uh, right now, according to Baseball Savant, he has a zero WOBA. His expected WOBA is over 400, which is top 8% in the league. Hmm. Average exit velocity of 92.7. Everything is in line. He's actually right now supposed to have the highest expected batting average of his career at 316. Uh, if you are worried about Trevor Story, do not be. He is smoking the ball. He's fine. Well, I'm concerned that he got caught stealing already. So <gasps> gasp. Like <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a bad, he's off to a bad start, but it's not the end of the world for him. Nope. For sure. Uh, and, and you know, what's, uh, what's encouraging is that his teammates, uh, the big concern with Trevor story coming into the season was, well, now there's no, no, no more Nolan Aronado and, Charlie Blackman's getting older. He's like not the same guy as before. And so there's nobody there to protect Trevor Story. Well, there's no excuse. Ryan McMahon is tearing the ball off the cover. And Garrett Hampson is also being productive. And they got CJ Crone down there. So maybe there is a light in the end of the tunnel for this uh, story here. Trevor hey. Story. Hey. Uh, yeah, the T is finally kicking in, right? <laughs> uh, another guy who I, I see here on the list, uh, according to Fangraphs, Josh Rojas, who was another player you mentioned uh, before the season started. Uh, he has 23 plate appearances, so it's not like he's lacking playing time. Um, he, he struggled, he struggled out of the gates. It's uh, definitely a, a problem. Uh, 125 BABIP. Uh, mm. the thing that I do like when I look at him is in those 23 plate appearances so far, uh, the strikeout rates right around league, you know, league average 20. Well, actually, it's below league average this year. Right now, the league average for strikeouts is something about 25%. Um, and Rojas is now at 21.7. If yeah. the strikeouts can stay down and he, he draws a healthy amount of walks, I, I still think he's going to be a good player. Nick Ahmed's been injured in Arizona. So uh, Rojas actually should be picking up shortstop eligibility based on your league here pretty shortly. I think he just gained it in mine, which required five games. But uh, with the news that Cattell Marte is injured, Josh Rojas is a guy that could survive in that lineup uh, and take a, a role from Cattell, or, yeah, from Cattell Marte. Another guy uh, moving up the list because we're going from the bottom up, right? Uh, the, your favorite player on the planet, Leody Tavares. <laughs> oh, God. I told you guys he's not a good hitter. Uh, 60% strikeout rate. He's <laughs> not a good hitter. <laughs> no, that's one of those where you just stash him on the bench and hopefully he figures it out <laughs> soon because. Uh, and then with the second you put him on the bench, he has like a four steal week. That's all you're looking for, man. That's all you're looking for. But it doesn't count because he's on your bench. <laughs> well, I mean, things happen, right? I mean, maybe this is the week that he. Gets things figured out. Maybe he plays the, uh, I don't know who's a bad, the Rockies in Colorado or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to see some positives here, according to fan graphs and my little uh, customized uh, data table here. Um, no, not a lot to like here. Uh, uh, Evan White still striking out too much. Uh, Alex Verdugo off to a very slow start. Okay, I got one. I got one. I got one. Leo, oh. Leo de Tavares has a 14.3 barrel rate. So I don't believe you. No way. Does he I'm really? I'm looking at it, 14.3. Okay, okay, so don't even look, right? Well, the reason he, he, has, he has that high is because he, uh, he, he only has one barrel, so that must mean that he, <laughs> he has maybe one ball in the play or something. And, and uh, Yeah, he's had seven batted balls, one barrel. There you go, man. Average exit velocity under 25th percentile, yeah. I do like some of the new sliders that they've added on Baseball Savant. Have you had a chance to check them out? I, I didn't they, see any difference. They, they I, added I a max exit velo, which is a pretty good indicator of raw power. Uh, they've added a chase rate. And I want to say they added one more. No, it was just those two. But a max okay. EV and chase rate, which I've always like, 
I'd go to look at a player to see if they were struggling and I'd go to look at their chase rate or their whiff rate. I think one of yeah, whiff rates up there too. They used to not have a whiff rate. All right. Uh, here's another guy for you. Um, this one hits close to home. Raphael Devers is struggling uh, mightily. I know hit, hit his first home run today. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. It was guys, like 113, 12 off the bat. It was, he, he smacked it, but he's a guy that uh, for being a lefty, he's one of my least favorite lefty bats. Yeah. I can see that. And I, and I can't tell you exactly what it is, but. Uh, is it because he's too short? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a big Nick Madrigal and David Fletcher fan. So I have no problem with yeah, height on my team. They're, they're second baseman. It's okay. If they're slappy, or, but you know, <laughs> Devers is like six foot and he's kind of rotund and he's supposed to be a power hitting third baseman. And so, yeah, there's a little hey, bit I of Pablo it, hey, Sandoval in here. Your mean Mercedes. I, I love your mean Mercedes. He's a little rotund too. It's okay. Yeah, I, I always want to drive a Mercedes too one of these days, but you know, we all can't have a Merry Christmas. But Rafael Devers, uh, that, that one hits close to home as I do have him in my fan tra- in our Fantrax League for the Baseball Life Facebook group, uh, Baseball League. And uh, well, I, I got no other option at third base, so I'm just going to keep plugging him and plugging him and plugging him. And, and, and the speaking best. of the Fantrax Baseball League, I, I guess we can take a, a short minute. Uh, we had a uh, somewhat of a major trade, did we not, Felipe? And when you I say what? we we had somewhat of a major trade, I literally mean we did. We uh, did the yeah. two commissioners meeting up and striking a deal. Uh, I feel weird about it, but I, I hope it works out in the end. Uh, we traded essentially what was Jared Kalenic for Luis Robert. Uh, I don't trust the Luis Robert hit tool, so I jump ship. No, of there, course, there what does he uh, what does he promptly do the very next day? He hits a home, hits run. A home run. Yeah, and he's stolen like a couple of bases since then too. So, no, but it was a it was a four player trade, wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, I, it, 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 essentially, I, I gave you Austin Martin, I think, and Jerry Kalenic. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Luis Robert and Austin Martin. You're right, and then and I, I got back Kalenic and somebody that probably wasn't all that important. <laughs> Well, it was important to me. I, I hesitated to, uh, to to trade a get, uh, away a guy. It was a relief know. pitcher. No, was it class? No, it wasn't class no, A. You didn't want class A. I, I did want class A. Uh, you, you it's not loading, him. but uh, Luis Robert for Jared Kalenic in what was essentially a straight up trade. And um, I mean, Austin Martin could be a very good player. I just don't think with the time window we have in this league that he's really going to factor in too much. No, but uh you, you never say never man uh, never say never never say never i mean it's never people, too early <laughs> no people told me that i mean remember mario told me uh boba shed he's never gonna oh yeah you're right it's not working uh boba shed's not gonna uh come up soon and he got called up anyway in what 2017 2018 whatever i don't remember the year exactly but the the two i remember i, I drafted two minor league players nick senzel and boba shed and he and he told me i don't think those guys are gonna nick senzel nick senzel was the second piece you gave ah him. yes okay there so you see how it goes full it, circle it, with he's, he's a guy who is he's off to a good start he's off to a batting like 350 and 15 some plate appearances well not on um, my team no, and no. with uh shoga akayama still out uh center fields is uh nick senzel's well Nick Senzel and Tyler Naquin. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. But, because yeah. I, I think they're both playing right now with Jesse Winker a little banged up. Yeah. Uh, saw a good tweet said, uh, why is Jesse Winker playing in Tyler Naquin's body? <laughs> 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 and I, I really agreed with that because I was like, wow, Tyler Naquin looks like an absolute stud right now. Well, that's the thing I liked. Uh, uh, that's what put me over the top was I at least have some insurance with Austin Martin. He's supposed to be the best hitter from the 2020 draft, if I remember correctly. Uh, and the big one was I looked at the landscape of my team and like, shoot, I know that I usually punt stolen bases, but I really dropped the ball in the stolen base category, even though we use stolen base net. So it doesn't really affect me too much, but, and we have 10 other hitting categories, (laughs) but still, I don't, I don't want to be lagging behind the stolen base thing. So I'm like, that's the only reason I did it was, well, Robert's supposed to be this 30, 30 guy potentially. Right. So I might as well get him for a guy who uh, does not have the same amount of speed like Robert is uh, projected to have. So Uh, he's he's not as fast as Luis Robert, but I think he might be a better base dealer. Well, he I didn't see. uh, Well, that that was the thing. I saw the minor league numbers, and like I'm not seeing any stolen base potential here according to his minor league. Now, mind you, I know for Kalenic. I, I didn't see anything. You're, I swear. You're, you're crazy. That's the only reason I made that trade. He was like 2020 20 in uh 19. Okay, oh, he had okay. seven. He had uh no, yeah, he had he had uh 20 stolen bases in 2019 and seven 23 home runs in 50, 96, uh 117 games. Okay, so you know what I did here? 
Uh, my stupid ass. Uh, I looked at. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled a fast one on the commission. Let's go. <laughs> no, uh, I saw seven stolen bases, 10 stolen bases, three stolen bases. I'm like, ah, this guy don't swim. He's not fast. Uh, that's but that's no, 20. <laughs> no, no, but I, 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 I split it among. I didn't, I didn't put, I didn't combine. Put all the seasons team. together. Because there was all together, yeah. yeah, they were separated. So yeah, I saw eleven stolen bases. I mean, yeah, he has ten stolen bases, but I should have done fifteen stolen bases in twenty eighteen and twenty. So yeah, big boo boo here on my part. But I also you saw see that's the, the thing is I don't think Jared Clinic Clinic will actually run all that much. I don't uh, think but so I think it could be one of those trout situations in which like the first two or three years he just runs like a madman <laughs> and then he just slowly stops. And all I need is those first two years because we have two years before we redraft. Uh, yeah, and. You got, uh, yeah, it's, this year uh, and then two more. No, hold on. No, it's this year. Next year we go to shoot. We got to look at the rules again. But no, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can swear we had four seasons and then redraft. No, it's three seasons. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about <laughs> this later because I don't know. But anyway, uh, the the thing that really made the trade for me was I also saw Fangraphs and I saw Robert Speed at the at the top of the pyramid there. And then Kalenic goes from 50 speed to 45 speed. And that kind of scared me. I know these are subjective, but I do like how Fangraphs does their prospect rankings. And I felt, well, if stolen, if I need to, if, if the goal is to win right now and I need stolen bases, um, I, I have to pull the trigger on this trade. As much as I love Kalenic, I have to do this. I have to do this. <laughs> and what happens then? I find out, Sean, that even without Robert, who was sitting on my bench for those two first uh, periods, um, well, not the first two periods, but, you know, the, the – the first uh, game was an extended period, uh, two yeah. extended periods, whatever. I So I had a chance to put him in my lineup in, in time because of the trade, right? I, I, I put him on my bench. And despite him being on my bench, I still lead the league in stolen base nets. <laughs> it's like, why did I make this trade? I didn't need him after all. <laughs> Who's leading your uh, team in stolen bases right I now? I have no clue. But I know. It's, I, okay, so Ramon Laureano is one guy. I, oh, I yeah. L- L- uh, Laureano is off to a really hot start in terms of, like, he gets on base and he's stealing. I think Next, he's got, like two three something like that uh, well i don't know because i do we do net stolen bases i do he's at two net stolen bases so. okay uh, uh what's his nick solak also has suddenly yeah he found, has four stolen bases so far he has four so, yeah he's found the fountain of youth over there until, uh, not the fountain of youth but he's <laughs> it turns out he's a good the a's player. are a bad team bad teams run more i mean that it's that simple <laughs> listen we we warned you guys we warned you that the a's were a bad team or not a bad team but a mediocre team that uh and they're off to a slow start, and yeah. when you're off to a slow offensive start like they are with yeah, Chapman and Olsen yeah. starting slow, you got to manufacture runs somehow. Laureano's off to a solid little start. He's doing what he can to help his team. The Oakland Athletics are just a, 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 a National League team in the American League West. That's all they are. Uh, <laughs> all speaking they are. of which, uh, Sean Murphy's struggling. He has gone hitless so far this year. Uh, but, yeah, just out of curiosity, who else has been stealing bases? Nick uh, Solak's uh, given you two, and then you've gotten one oh, from each. Rizzo, Jesus, you're Soto. There? Yep. <laughs> So yeah, it's a it's a by committee thing, right? You mentioned all those a, stolen bases by committee. Don't tell the Rays that they they might take it to heart. And I still got Michael Taylor hoping one day that he can actually uh, steal a bunch of bases uh, with the. Yeah, here you are talking about all of his great speed. He doesn't even have a stolen base yet. Yeah, bum. <laughs> bum. Anyway, uh, let's move on. You know, I saw a comment that I wanted to uh, touch base with you. Uh, if I could find it, I just remember right now. Uh, David Peralta. Okay, so John, uh, uh, he's been very active on the chat. Uh, he's asking about David Peralta, right? Usually WRC plus of 115. He's at 11. Has not drawn a walk yet. He's, he's at 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first I, the I love short samples or small sample size advanced stats. They're so much fun. Well, he's age 33. Uh, is this really a sample size issue or is this is it time to be legit worried? And, and as you know, Sean, I, I was not on the David Peralta bandwagon all off season long. I, I haven't heard you mention him at all. Uh, although I, I'm looking at your hat, I now see why the one dude said Atlanta United because you're wearing an, an yeah. Atlanta United hat. But like I said, I was not clamoring to get a David Peralta. I, I forgot what was your stance on David Peralta, but uh, he's I mean, he's like Nick Marcakis. I don't think he's ever going to be the 30 home run guy he was in 2018. Mm-hmm. But he's established that since 2017, uh, he's been a 288 hitter uh, for his career. He's a 290 hitter. Uh, I believe that the splits thing, he's been back and he's like a lot of, of uh, Robinson Cano versus lefties. Like one year he's been terrible. One year he's been good. It's just a um, weird situation for him to be in. I think he he's a, a trade candidate this year. I think the Diamondbacks need him to do good. So he's going to play. Yeah. Um, and then once he 
gets back to normal, I could see him being traded. Yeah, him and Escobar, they that's a horrible outfield. <laughs> Wait, is Escobar uh, Escobar's outfield? Uh, third base, second okay. base, and third base? He's actually playing a couple, a little bit of second base this year. Has he played outfield before? I feel like he's played yeah. outfield before. I think that's just Eddie Rosario. <laughs> I can't tell him apart, man. They're, They're the, the same, same person. <laughs> All right, uh, so moving down. Okay, so I, it's, I mean, it, you guys are just, by hearing the names, I'm just going to run them by, don't do not do any analysis. I'm just going to run them by, I mean, there's David Peralta right there on the on the list that he mentioned. Aaron Hicks, Marcelo Zuna, you mentioned Joey Votto. Uh, yeah, David Fletcher. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up. Fletcher. Yeah, I, I warned you. I warned you after one week. Sell, sell, sell. Uh, get, get your victory lap in now while you can. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a, a reoccurring theme on this show. How's David Fletcher doing at the bottom of the list? Just like I expected. Uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. Uh, obviously Kevin Newman, who I think at one point we thought that he was the only legit pirates player to grab this year, aside from Cabrian Hayes. Uh, Dansby Swanson is at the bottom of this list again. Ryan Mountcastle is off to a slow start. Jock Peterson, who just hit a home run, but it's still at the bottom. Well, you don't need to tell a Cubs fan. If- I mean, isn't it always so funny that the guys that have the greatest. The greatest what? Oh, that have the greatest spring trainings uh always get off to like the worst starts josh rojas jock peterson were like two of the best hitters in spring training and then oh season starts i i forgot how to hit a baseball you never talk about those guys. that's why you know you don't pay attention to those uh stats man it's, it's all practice anyway uh lourdes, <laughs> Guri- lourdes Guriel, who was a guy that we constantly talked about uh also at the bottom of this list he'll be fine He'll okay. be fine. I promise. Uh, Trey Mancini and Alex Verdugo. Those, those are two guys that we kind of, uh, maybe not so much Mancini, but definitely Verdugo. I remember we had some high hopes for him. Uh, he's off to a really slow start. Uh, you're ready to move to the pitchers, starting pitchers, that is. Yeah, we can do the pitchers a little bit faster than we did the hitters. But, uh, I mean, okay. really with a lot of these guys, they've only made one start. So I'm not trying to dig too much into the one start. Uh, I believe there's been less than, like, 30 or 40 guys that have made two starts already. So, all right. Uh, you know, yeah, there's 31 guys that have made two starts already. Okay. Bear with me here. This, this stupid thing is being stupid. Okay. So we mentioned glass now before uh, I'm starting to see if there's any names. John means obviously had the big game against the Red Sox. Uh, he's off to a very good start. Do you believe it? I mean, he only has a 6.94 strikeout per nine, but again, that's only after uh, two starts, but do you believe he's it? All, John he, yeah, he's a, I believed in him a little bit more when his velocity, both last year and in spring training, was sitting like 94, 95. Uh, so far this year, it's sitting closer to 92, 93. Yeah. So, a little worried there. Uh, victory lap time. Kevin Gossman, a number eight, according to wins above replacement by Fangraphs, starting pitcher edition, 94 mile per hour. I told you. I told you he's been uh, 7.24K per nine. He can't hey, strike out a batter per inning. He's not elite. But the best part, 1.98 uh, walk rate. So uh, walk per nine. Uh, he'll be fine. I, I mean, it's not like he's Kyle Hendricks or anything. I mean, he's actually throws with velocity and he's actually has a low exit velocity as well. 87.3 miles an hour. So I also I would like to just you, since you mentioned his name, uh, Kyle, Kyle Hendricks, Hendricks. Yeah. I would like to take everyone who freaked out about his very first start. I want to grab your head. Yeah. And say, stop it. Because, I mean, he's two starts in, and the ERA is already back down to three because he had a scoreless outing in the it's, second one. He's he's fine. He's good. He's a good it, pitcher. It's always a concern because he's a softball pitcher. He throws underhand, you know. like he he He's the 16-inch uh, softball pitcher of Major League Baseball. <laughs> uh, but did you see who he faced in that second start, did you? No. Oh, was it Pittsburgh? No, 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 no Pittsburgh start. hit him the first time. I don't know who yeah. it was the second time. It was uh, the Brewers, man. I know the Brewers offense, oh. but I don't, I don't want to talk about the Brewers offense. I want to talk about the guy who was pitching a side uh, uh, against him. And that's my guy, Brandon Woodruff, who uh, also shut down. Well, I mean, I guess it's easy to shut down the Cubs as well. <laughs> Did you I, see I, the stat posted in Baseball Life earlier today that uh, Major League pitchers so far have a higher batting average than the Cubs lineup? <laughs> yeah, I saw that, unfortunately. Oh, uh, that's brutal. <laughs> But uh, can they hit a home run like Anthony Rizzo did today? No. Hey, they hit three home runs today. It was Baez, Brian, and Rizzo, I believe. Uh, the wind must have been blowing out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nathan Elvaldi, I think we talked. Did we talk about him? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we briefly mentioned him. Fastball velocity is way up, back up. He's healthy. He's good. He's yeah, he's, he's rearing. He's ready to go. Still available. Uh, Matthew Boyd, it looks like he is uh, bouncing back. He Although- had a interesting pitch mix change. I, I watched his opening day start. And it was nasty. I mean, it was literally snow flurries for the first three innings. Um, <laughs> but then in the second start, he threw his changeup 
more than he's ever thrown it in a game before. And he throws fastball as little as he's ever thrown it before. So Matthew Boyd, I have a feeling might be going the Dylan Bundy route here where uh, you have a great breaking pitch. uh, You have good off speed stuff and you have a absolutely shit show of a fastball. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you just don't throw your fastball. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, we'll see Boyd. I don't think has the command that Bundy does, so it might not work out as well, but so far two starts in 2.13 ERA. We'll take it. Uh, another victory lap alert, Joe Musgrove. I told you guys about Joe Musgrove. I posted something about him on Saturday night, I believe, as he's just was dancing around the Diamondbacks, uh, you know, just making them look like very foolish, had a very good start against them. And he's up on the top of the list. And of course, you know what? A guy like Joe Musgrove pitching that well, you know what that means for me, right? What? <laughs> He was on my bench. Oh. <laughs> uh, I did not get the memo that he was going to be starting in that first uh, weekend of the season. So uh, for those who don't know, uh, Sean and I are in a semi-weekly league. So uh, lineups locked every, what, Friday, Mondays and Fridays, right? Yes. And our first matchup of the, our first actual uh, first half of the week matchup uh, ends today at tonight. So we'll set our lineups for the next three days. But because it is a semi-weekly league, uh, we already have uh, several uh, six teams who are 1-0 and and the other six are 0-1. And And for those who missed it, the one pattern that we noticed there, Sean, was five out of the six people who won their game in in that first uh, game of the season, they all been guests on this show. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Uh, um, uh, Lance Lynn just threw a uh, complete game shutout, 11 strikeouts. So he'll be moving um, up the, the ranks. Oh, but here. one name that I want to talk about, he's one of the 31 that has started at least two games or 33 that have started at least two games. And he had a really bad opening day start. And he kind of bounced back yesterday. But it's not really the numbers that I want to talk about as much is Jack Flaherty. Mm-hmm. If you look at his baseball savant right now, it's not pretty. Uh, <laughs> exit velocity up, uh, hard hit percentage up strikeout percentage down. I mean, everything is going in the wrong direction for Jack Flaherty, who's only 25 years old. And the biggest thing I think I have an issue with here is his fastball velocity. His fastball um, just two years ago in 2019 was averaging 94.3, the highest it's been in his career. Uh, To start off 2021, his average four-seam velocity is under 93 miles an hour. And that's something, and his his command's been a little off even going into spring training. But if he doesn't have his good fastball, I, I'm really worried about Jack Flaherty. Yeah, that's a shame. But, uh, you know, not my problem. That's Henry's problem, right? So <laughs> he, he really want, he went aggressive after him. So that's the damn shame for him. Uh, another guy who's kind of surprising here. Uh, well, Wade Miley is a big surprise, but I don't. Oh, know. that's that's one start. He he's okay. He's not that good. <laughs> I don't want it to play. You know, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather TJ Antone start. <laughs> of course. Speaking but of, his... did you see the picture I posted that uh, was between him and Jake Arrieta? Uh, Jamius Mooney, former guest of the show, actually was able to guess it, but it was side by side pictures of TJ oh, Antone yeah. and Jake Arietta, and they look like identical twins. It's yeah, freaky. Freak me out. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Damn, freaking hipsters. Uh, <laughs> here's a guy. Here's a guy. Uh, uh, that is this next name, right? I, I had him for a little bit on, on my points league, and I had to drop him because I wasn't sure if he was starting or not. And I guess he was facing the Yankees because he plays for the Blue Jays. So. I did not like his chances, but Steven Matz. Oh, uh, yes. Top of this list, the top 30, according to fan graphs so far this season, with the 95 mile per hour sinker. Did you expect that from him? Uh, He's always had a good velocity on his primary pitches, both the sinker and the four seamer, which he never really threw. Uh, What I found interesting in his start was one, he sustained the velocity much better than he normally did. but right here, pull up his sinker. Yeah, last year, I mean, last year he had averaged 94 and a half miles an hour. So it's not like he's added like this big jump in velocity. Um, last year, his stuff was good. It just, everything fell apart. He gave up a lot of home runs. Uh, but so far this year, I liked how he worked up in the zone uh, in his start, which was against uh, the Rangers. That's what it was. Um, he went six and a third, only gave up one run, uh, nine strikeouts, one walk. He's always had the stuff. He's always had the kind of idea. It's been a lot of mental execution more than physical execution. Um, The the changeup and the curveball and the slider are all very good pitches. Uh, The uh, curveball last year was actually, or the changeup was the first year he's really had a great changeup. 
I, I think that he could be a breakout candidate in terms of if he's available, I would drop my worst starting pitcher for Steven Matz right now. Oh boy. Um, I still have an ugly taste in my mouth from the last time I had Steven Matz, which was about a year or two ago when he got destroyed uh, after what the first or second game of the season. I'm oh yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, it was, it was bad. So I guess the Phillies, I believe. He Orioles, like, like he had a blow up versus the Orioles, a blow up versus the Phillies. It, it's just bad. So, but <laughs> We don't no, talk I mean, about it. I, no, I was considering him for this past week. So yeah, if he's still on waivers and if he has a favorable matchup, I might consider it knowing what I know now. Here's another name I want to throw at you. Jeff Hoffman of the Reds. All he had uh, to do was he was a top prospect. He was with the Blue Jays. He just needed to get it. out of Colorado. Yeah. Like there was a time where he was higher rated than I think John Gray. If I believe so, I, I they were both like top 50 prospects at one well, point. That was supposed to be a thing over there. Uh, Jeff Hoffman. Uh, Riley Pint. Uh, no, I don't remember him. But jo- oh. John Gray's one guy. Not this John Gray who's on the thing here, but uh, John Gray from Colorado. <laughs> but there's another guy. It was a, a, a Latino guy. Um, Nelson Miguel Castro. No, I don't remember. Miguel Castro, I think, did pitch in Colorado. And he was a part of the Tulowitzki trade. Okay, so I he's, on the so Met, was, he's on the Mets now. He's so, so a pitcher. Hoffman. And th- those are the, supposed to be the big three names, you know. You know, if we can't uh, we can't figure out this high altitude, we're just gonna get a bunch of guys who could throw really fast, and they all floundered over there. And look at Jeff Hoffman now going from yeah. one pitch, one hitting friendly ballpark to another. Uh, but so even know, then, that's a that's a big upgrade <laughs> from Colorado oh, yeah. to Cincinnati. Like, well, speaking of John Gray, he's on the list as well. Uh, top twenty five pitcher this year so far. Yep, uh, he had a, he carried a no hitter today, I believe, uh, into the sixth or seventh inning. In Colorado, that would have been something. He's still the owner of a 58.3 hard hit rate, so let's not uh, get too high on this guy. <laughs> but so far, I mean, the, all the, uh, the 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 straight numbers, you know, they're pretty impressive. Steven Strasburg is also on top of this list. Uh, looks like there's no ill effects towards the carpal tunnel. Oh, uh, I, I, he had a good start at versus One. Atlanta, yeah. but that fastball velo was I, – I was tracking it during the game. And it's like 90, I think he averaged 92. Yeah, 92 yeah. and a half. That's, yep. uh, I, I know he's got great breaking stuff, you know, the curveball slider, but, um, or whatever he calls it now. But <laughs> if he's averaging, you know, 92 miles an hour on his fastball, I that's why I want no part of Steven Strasburg. In 2020, yeah. in the limited time we saw him, it averaged 91.8. So right in the same ballpark. Uh, I just, I don't trust Steven Strasburg to stay healthy. Maybe I, I think he's too damaged at this point to rely on. Maybe he can just survive on veteran guile and craft, man. Give him that benefit of the oh, doubt, right? Oh God. What? Steven Strasburg being 32 years old makes me feel old. You give everybody else, you give every punch and judy pitcher a chance. Why don't you give <laughs> Steven Strasburg a chance? What's up, man? Racist. Because the price. <laughs> David Price, what does he have to do no. with anything? <laughs> racist no seriously uh uh yes that, that's, no, that's pitch info stack cast yeah uh, uh, uh one you know if we want to be positive about steven strasberg his four seam fastball is up from last year well, uh, marginally and it's completely like three and a half four and a half miles an hour below what his career average was well that's a given i mean he's, he's 32 years old give him a chance here uh D- jacob de would like a word <laughs> no, we all know he's cheating everybody cheats oh speaking of cheating right <laughs> Did you Speaking see the Trevor cheating, Bauer alert? I just saw the Trevor Bauer alert. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I heard something <laughs> about that from uh, yesterday or maybe this morning that they, after one that They had they, removed one of the balls. One of the balls, really. But I didn't hear anything about it. And then right now, uh, Trevor Bauer's balls are getting investigated. Like, oh, oh boy, shouldn't his doctor be doing that? <laughs> but, you know, hold on, Sean. Shouldn't his doctor be uh, checking his balls? But, no, that's what he... He's does he, his does he doctor his balls? He doctors his own <laughs> balls, apparently. So Does he have a ball doctorer? But all this year about uh, this whole time, bad mouthing Trevor Bauer and being the only oh. ones who don't believe anything that he does anymore, uh, it's oh. gonna come to fruition, and and we're gonna be running our victory laps pretty soon. So, oh. God, yeah. that cracks me up. I, uh, I saw that. I was gonna say something, but I was gonna wait for you to bring it up. Uh, and then the last two names I want to bring up, uh, you know, uh, Jake Arrieta and Aaron Sanchez. <laughs> I told you about Aaron Sanchez. Aaron Sanchez. Oh my God, that's throwback. I'm telling you, I think the balls are softer. That means he'll get less blisters. And that means he'll be out there more often, right? Has you maybe, hopefully. <laughs> that, that was my that was my hypothesis back in the offseason. Uh a concern is that he's uh fast. But they're actually not- saying that the balls this year are bouncier. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it, no, they're so they're, they're bounce. They're it, I'm not sure if they're harder like on the outside, but it's a weird that the ball itself isn't wasn't deadened. 
Uh, and they did no studies to affect what the drag would be, but whatever they did to it to affect the drag, uh, like exit velocities across the board for major league hitters are up, hmm. but distances are down. So there had to be something to, that they messed with in terms of the drag. You know what it is though, man, that, that's just bad weather. That's what that's it is. bad weather. I mean, only Miguel Cabrera can hit a home run in the snow, right? Uh, that, that was a, a great video. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I, so far my favorite moment of the season. Oh, that, that, that's frightening to look at uh, from the last time Aaron Sanchez pitched in 2019. Yeah. His uh, fastball sinker averaged right around 93.6 miles an hour. <laughs> um, and in his start this year, uh, it averaged 90 and a half. So it dropped three oh, miles. Well, you hour. guys like to brag about being 20 years old. Aaron Sanchez, shoulder injuries, years old. shoulder injuries. They kill you. Not all 20. Did, did he keep it on the ground? Go uh, 68.8 ground ball percentage. That'll go. that'll work if he that'll can keep fly. the ball on the ground like that. Not fly. His movement was still great on all of his pitches in that start. Uh, sinker had more horizontal movement than just about any pitch, any other sinker. Same with the fastball and the curveball. So, hey, as, maybe uh, Sanchez is going to figure it out. As I was going to say, not all twenty-eight year olds are built the same way. So, uh, and then the other guy was Jake Arrieta. In, in Aaron Sanchez's case, I'm pretty sure he's been rebuilt several times now. <laughs> yeah, they did all this rebuild just to for him to throw ninety miles per hour on, <laughs> on average. Uh, Jake Arrieta has a ninety-one point two average on his sinker on his last start. Uh, and his exit velocity he against... threw it less. If I remember, I remember seeing something where he threw his changeup more than usual, or his changeup or his uh, curveball. It was well, one of the two. I only care about you know velocity with my custom list. I want to just see the velocity. I don't really. That's your department where you break <laughs> down the pitchers. Because if I were to account for curveballs and sliders, oh no, okay, that's what it was. He ditched the changeup. He didn't throw it once. Okay, and he threw the sinker more. Okay. Interesting. Oh, so approach. 91.2 miles an hour sinker then. Uh, exit velocity against was 93.1 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, so... 383 expected Woba versus that sinker. That's not, not good. <laughs> that's not that, good. That, that's that's <laughs> flukiness right there. I don't care how much you love J.K. Rietta. Hey, the curveball, he threw it uh, 23% of the time, got whiffs on uh, two-thirds of the swings. So, so are you saying that he's not going to have any trouble with the curve? Right, that, he he is not going to have trouble with the curve. He's going to have trouble with the sinker. <laughs> the sinker. He's going to be sinking with that sinker. Okay, enough. I, I need a Bollywood remake of that movie called like Trouble with the Sinker. <laughs> it's, it's about, you it's must about, make the ball sink. <laughs> it, it's about a white guy who goes to India and uh, he spends the entire time in his bathroom trying to learn to throw a sinker. No, he just spends the t- entire time in the bathroom. <laughs> Different kind of sinker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay war what is it good for we're doing the reverse now let's look oh. at the bad starts and i'm just gonna quickly lightning round this and you tell me when to stop tanner Rorick at the bottom of the list followed by marco gonzalez brett anderson luke weaver max scherzer domingo german or as i like to call him sunday german sunday german <laughs> uh sean Manaya still sucks david peterson is at the bottom adrian morahone that's kind of disappointing uh, I know that he was a hot commodity this past week because he he's supposed to be having two starts in this week that we're in right now. So I wonder how he if he even got to that because uh, I only see one start and he only lasted four innings. Yeah, was that a, was it a start? Did he actually start? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's it looks like he did start. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That that, that was because um, I don't think he was supposed to start. I, I think that was a. Or they weren't planning on using him as a traditional starter. Oh, I see. Um, so they were never going to let him go like six innings or anything like that. It was wow. they're they're still building him up. Like a, like, like what Aaron Sanchez? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, if, if if you're in a points league and you were hoping to, if you're in a weekly league and you're hoping to get that upside Adrian Moore at home double starts uh, for this past week, you had to have been very disappointed. Uh, he did throw at 96.8 mile per hour fastball on average. And exit velocity against was 85 miles an hour. So uh, there's a lot to like here. What we don't like is the fact that he is being babied a little bit by the Padres, which is their want to do. Yeah. Uh, so whatever. Uh, Luis Garcia, Mike Fultonovich, Frankie Montez, Advert Alzale, Mitch Keller, Chad Cool, Justin Dunn, Aaron Savali. So uh, it, it's a lot of names that I expected to be here. There's Brady Singer, <laughs> of course. Chris Bassett, your ace for the Oakland Athletics, and that's why they're not going to go anywhere this year. <laughs> Jose Ureña, who uh, was he the opening day starter for the Tiger? Uh, no, Matthew Boyd was. Ah, uh, okay. So Ureña, at the, I think he's still top of the rotation. Yeah, he's um, like second, third. Well, three Ful- innings. Fulmer's pitch. coming out of the bullpen and looks pretty solid so far. So maybe Michael Fulmer maybe finds his way back into the rotation. 
And oh, no. Adam Wainwright to uh, finish off this uh, last page on, over at the Fangraphs page. Moving on to the penultimate page here, Dean Kramer. <laughs> oh God, what an unfortunate that's, name! That's a, that's the second Kramer that I mentioned uh, at the bottom of the list. The other one was Kevin Kramer of the Pirates on the hitting list. Now Dean Kramer's on this one. Different spelling, I know. Uh, Corey Kluber. Who didn't see Corey Kluber not being good to start off his Yankee uh, uniform days? Uh, Dylan Cease still sucks. Still has trouble <laughs> with command. Has trouble with the curves, has trouble with everything. <laughs> you know, all the White Sox fans, oh man, Dylan Cease looks great in spring training. He's going to be awesome. I think he's finally hit the corner. Nope, he's still. Uh, <laughs> he crashed into the corner. <laughs> he crashed into the corner. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's all relative. It's all the beginning of the season. I mean, there's still a chance Dylan Cease might finally figure it out one day, but this doesn't look good, man. This doesn't yep. look good. Uh, on the bright side, 97.5 mile per hour fastball after one start so that's good caleb smith and merrill kelly couple of diamondbacks i believe smith caleb smith is going to be going back to the bullpen is that the case uh, they brought him out to eat some innings because i don't th- he was like their fourth or fifth starter so i think he was much how the mets used joey lacasey yesterday okay. um they were going to skip that fifth spot in the rotation anyway so they brought him into i still think he's supposed to be in their rotation uh caleb smith all right well we'll see we'll keep an eye on that but so far it's off to a not a good start andrew haney i'm mentioning andrew haney because uh our guy austin asked us if we if we would rather have nathan Obal- uh yovaldi or andrew haney at this uh Evaldi. Right? Yeah, that's actually, yeah. Evaldi. uh this off season i might have said something different but uh you know Things are always changing in fantasy baseball, right? Yes. So we are, we just adjust with the times, brother. Uh, you mentioned Jack Flaherty. There he is. Uh, Kohei Arihara. That was a that's a name that I saw a lot this offseason. I was meaning to get your opinion, but the fact that we didn't talk about him too much m- might be the indicator as to how good or bad he's going to be in 2020. Do you see anything out of this Kohei Arihara out of? Uh, he the was Texas the Rangers? guy for the Rangers. Yeah, I haven't looked at any of his stats so far this year, so I I have no clue. No, absolutely none. Yeah, he had an okay spring, if I remember yeah. correctly, but that was uh so far he has a five percent strikeout rate, but no walks. That's like you I don't want to say like typical of some of the oriental players that come over from Japan and Korea. It's like they, 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 they don't strike out a whole lot of guys like Tanaka. Like hey, Tanaka was never a huge strikeout guy. Uh and then the are the bad pitchers from the states, they go over to Japan and Korea to play. Miles and guys that couldn't strike out a batter per inning, uh, guys like Dan Straley and Chris Flux, and they go over there and they dominate. So uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, well, uh, 92 mile per hour sinker on average. Uh, unfortunately, it was met with a 93.4 exit velocity against. So sinkers always get crushed hard. It, it's like a, a matter of fact. It's just the difference in an effective sinker and a ineffective sinker. They're both going to be hit hard. It's are they hit into the ground or are they hit? On, on a line so just realize that i'm looking myself at the ca- on the camera I, I look like earl hyman from home improvement howdy <laughs> neighbor okay uh what were we talking about jack flaherty okay well, we talked about jack flaherty already uh madison bumgarner he's a bum rich hill chase anderson so a lot of names if i keep going we're just gonna keep bumping into names there's marcus stroman who i never believed in in the first place but we're just gonna bump into a lot of names that uh we expected them to be this bad yeah uh, the, the last, uh, I do want to leave this. If you're in a somewhat shallow 10 or 12 team league and you play with a bunch of idiots uh, and Sandy Alcantara was not drafted, go get Sandy Alcantara right now. Ow. Oh, he, I, I'm telling you, I, you know that there's some leagues out there where he's not rostered. Uh, you, you have your CBS in front of you. You should probably look it up. Fast I'm looking it up right now. There's no way in hell he's only. But it's like, I mean, it's the Marlins. You know, when you play with people who don't know what they're doing, you know, sometimes they don't want to pick players from bad teams. Uh, you want to guess? Uh, you want to take a guess as to what his uh, rostering, ownership rate is? Rostering, at I would CBS, say. At CBS, by the way. 87%. Okay, let's see. He's rostered at 97%. Man. Okay, never mind. So the, the times are changing, I guess. But, but uh, uh, I mean, you're how many? How, how many was he starting? 85 percent so okay yeah so thinking about that yeah sandy alcantara he's looked great in his first two starts uh he was all he was the centerpiece of the ozuna deal and it's just taken him a little bit to get there he's still only uh 25 years old uh the velo's always been there he and i think he's figuring out how to pitch in terms (laughs) of breaking balls now i mean we saw we've seen the progression it's like you can look at his stat line and it's very easy to see how he's progressed and right now it's trending up. It's been trending up for about three years now. So uh, hop on that Sandy Alcantara train ASAP. You won't regret it. 
And uh, we're kind of getting uh, short on time. Things are flying by as we're having fun. So we're not going to deal with the relief pitches. I mean, relief pitches, I think we need more of a sample size. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be talking about guys who have made like one appearance. Yeah, or Like uh, Ed, Edwin Diaz just made his first appearance tonight. So Yeah, so it's, or Julian Mayweather, who hasn't appeared at all this week, as of, at least as of right now. Yeah, I seen, uh, I don't know if- in, in my TGFBI league, uh, I dropped 250 of my 1,000 fab <laughs> on Julian Mayweather. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so we we did that thing, <laughs> and, and, and then I, he doesn't it doesn't make an appearance. <laughs> and I guess we could talk about that on Sunday. Uh, hopefully, like I said, we get more of a sample size. But yeah, it, it, just waiting around for these closers or these potential closers to kind of start getting some regular playing time is it, killing you because you're just reserving a, a bench spot for that those saves, right? And yeah, I mean, like, I have I have Karen Chat Clase and Merriweather as my relievers right now, in, like in that in that TGFBI. I'm trying to handcuff Karen Jack and uh, Klaus A and hope I get some saves. But uh, no, it, 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 Nick Whitburn ends up getting saves, so I'm just screwed <laughs> either way. God, I, I hate you, Tito. I hate you, Tito Francona. Last thing I'm going to say about the relief pitchers, uh, Julian Merriweather does lead all relief pitchers in war. As a yeah, right I mean, he, he came out and he was absolutely dominant. Also, my slap hitting technique is seeming to work. I'm checking my TGFBI standings right now. I'm yeah. third overall in or third in my league, 100th overall out of the 495. Um, my team batting average is 285. Thank you, Nick Madrigal and David Fletcher and everybody else who's made this possible. Magical. All right. Nick Madrigal? Has he's he bad like two, he's bad like 270. 260. I thought, he got a stolen base. Hit, I thought you were telling me he was going to hit over 300 right it's off the bat. It's been a week. <laughs> Thanks, not everybody, not everybody's each hero. Come on now. Thanks, Nick Magical, for keeping me up above average a little, a little bit of Omar Narvaez, so. Will Smith. Uh, yeah, I've done this with Story being bad. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I'm doing it. Oh, Luis Rise, who we will get to in just a second. So, all right. Uh, you said you want to talk about some injured players. There's been a lot of injuries. Yeah. So, so far this season. Uh, who do you want us to deal with? I right have now? the um right here. I just had the list pulled up in front of me. So some from that were hurt uh, before we even got here, uh, George Springer and Mike Soroka. Springer was rehabbing from a oblique that he hurt at the end of spring training. Um, and as he was ramping up activities to come back from that, he hurt his leg, his oh, quad, uh, which is like his fourth quad injury in the last three years. Go Kevin figure. I, I told people this. Um, nobody wanted to listen. And George Springer is out until further notice. Uh, Mike Soroka, of course, working his way back from the Achilles injury, um, has been working at the alternate site, and he has been stopped uh, due to some shoulder soreness, which is something that I feel like is relatively common when we see a pitcher miss a lot of time. And then once they start ramping back up, like Zach Wheeler comes to mind, he had that really long two-year recovery from Tommy John. And when he came back in 2017, he ended up having like shoulder soreness and injury. So um, Soroka's setback is delayed. Um, two more that are, you know, very keys to a lot of people's fantasy teams. Uh, actually three, but uh, Kittel Marte, Cabrian Hayes, and Tatis Jr. Um, I do think that there are some guys where if you have these guys rostered and you can move them to the IR and pick up their replacements, I don't think their replacements are going to hurt you. Uh, I think Philip Evans is a good player. Um, Cattell Marte is probably going to be replaced by some sort of combination of Josh Rojas and Tim Locastro, uh, who, you know, like fastest man in baseball. But um, hmm. two older veterans that got hurt on opening day or shortly before, uh, Josh Donaldson uh, hit one double. He looked great. The bat was awesome. And then he tried running to second base and he hurt his calf yet again. Uh, the big winner in that spot right there is Luis Arias, uh, who's already batting 390. He has uh, like seven hits already in six games. Uh, he's an absolute hitter. He was supposed to be their um, super utility guy. He was started all the game in left field on opening day, but with Josh Donaldson out, Luis Arias is now second base and third base eligible. Will likely pick up left field sometime during the season, but uh, an absolute, he's, he could win the batting title. I mean, there were this time last year, they were talking about him being the first 400 hitter um, in a long time. Hey, Fangraphs did an article on it. Don't don't yeah, laugh. Yeah. They did an article and they did the probability of someone batting 400. And the person with the highest probability of a 400 season was Luis Arias. And it was like Luis Arias 
10 piles of shit and then like somebody else probably yeah, if, nick madrigal <laughs> if, it would, if it would have been done it definitely would have been uh happening last season uh, yeah for sure uh i'm sorry did you mention tim anderson yet or no no i did not mention tim anderson i wasn't sure if they actually put him on the il or not uh no but he's expected to be out on at least until april 15th uh i i don't i don't know i don't know if you actually mentioned that george springer i saw that he is on the il already i don't know if you well yeah he, he, he started the season on the il with his oblique Oh, and then he I, was the oblique was apparently fine and he was um working oh, out uh you know doing drills and he then hurt his quad which uh, he's done a bunch so well uh Lurie garcia is now your starting shortstop for your white Sox, which no i'm not a fan of that nope no nope. not at all um <laughs> and that's gonna be the one issue that white Sox team runs into is depth I don't feel like they have a lot of depth. Well, I, I mentioned that in the offseason uh, to the White Sox fans that would w- be willing to listen to me. They didn't believe me. They thought I was just being a hater because I'm also a Cub fan. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, this is what happens. Uh, everything, my worst nightmares have come to have come true on this with this team. And uh, anyway, it's going to be a long season because now you have uh, – God, this is such a bad team now. But, hey, thank <laughs> God for your mean Mercedes and his uh, <laughs> lightning in a bottle uh, situation going over there uh possible replacements for um tim anderson just according to my cbs danny mendick like that's no let's not do that Uh, (laughs) isaiah kiner falefa i I guess he's. oh 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 i thought i thought you meant like for the white Sox. no no, yeah no no. do not roster danny mendick don't do that that. Uh, lurie garcia is available uh He's, I don't know, every time. Maybe, maybe, maybe get Larry Garcia. Remember when, what was it, Jose Abreu or, no, or, uh, 2019, I believe, or maybe even 2020, but apparently Larry Garcia uh, scored the most runs whenever Jose Abreu was at the. Huh. Like, <laughs> like, it's the that makes you thing. think, what was Larry Garcia doing at the top of the lineup or was he batting ninth a lot? No, he was batting ninth a lot. That's oh, the okay. Problem. So, yeah, he, was, <laughs> he kept getting driven in by those guys. And Tim Anderson would move him over, Abreu would knock him in. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, like, what are we doing? You know, you know, this guy is not l- anything to be a threat, right? Especially batting that low. And I'm pretty sure his on-base percentage is ridiculous. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so 2018, 303 on base. 2019, 310 on base. 2020, 317 on base. So there's some, there's a, there's a little bit of improvement, but this still yeah. sucks. For for the people that play in daily leagues, though, I think Garcia, if I remember correctly, does very well against lefties. Hmm. So he might be a guy that if you D- do DFS or a daily fantasy league, uh, I'm, I'm I think hoping the White Sox. Yeah, DFA he him. against <laughs> against DFA, lefties DFA in 2019, <laughs> he batted 311 with a 344 OBP against lefties. Still okay. a sub 800 OPS, but anything over 700 is like gold for Lurie Garcia. <laughs> All right, so some names: Paul the Young, uh, up or down on Paul the Young? Uh. I think he's off to a slow start, but he's got playing time. So up Joey Wendell up or down Uh, Tampa Bay platoon guy. So no, <laughs> he, he's, he's not r- rosterable. Like you don't know when he's going to play, if he's going to play, how much he's going to play. But hey, he disqualifies shortstop somehow. I, I, I don't remember him qualifying as shortstop at the beginning of the year. So that's a, that's the thing. Uh, ha Seung Kim from the Padres. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a guy that I totally forgot when I mentioned the Tatis injury, he is the, Probably him or Jake Cronenworth are the biggest winners of Tatis going down. Of course, they're saying that Tatis is only going to miss 10 days, which I think is. I don't think so. No, he, he even if he does come back after 10 days, he's going to take a voracious hack and he's going to do even more damage. And then they're going to do the surgery and it's just going to have been delayed by a month. Um, Ugh, but Hai Song Kim is a, we don't know what type of hitter he is in the pros yet, uh, but he was very good in Korea. Uh, but him and Jake Cronenworth are the, going to be the two to stand. Uh, if Hey Song Kim is available in your leagues now, pick him up now, now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Get him before Tatis is. You know they say he's done for the year because when that happens, everyone's going to go rush to get Kim. Get him before we get him, basically. Because yeah. <laughs> after the show, we go in and we uh, we pick up uh, players off waivers like we are want to do. I, I feel like we have an unofficial freeze on ourselves when it comes to waiver wires while the show is still going on. Yeah. <laughs> but five minutes after that show, we've been known to pick up those guys immediately. Uh, Hassan Kim, 40% rostered on CBS Sports. Yeah, so. that's that's going to go up in the next couple of weeks. Up. That's going to um, go. He, he That might push like 80 or 90%. I mean, he, he, he came in with such a lot of hype. And of course, playing time issues uh, brought that hype down a little bit. But 
now's the time to get them before it's too late like uh, you mentioned i mean that, the- that makes it look like a stroke of genius on um preller's part uh the fact that uh, everyone was like why are you getting this guy when you don't have anywhere to play him and then well, you, then he gets injured and it's like oh we do have a place to it, play him it, it's the opposite of the white Sox. while the white Sox were just fine just uh, having the bare minimum on their team the padres wanted that depth they wanted to build everything and improve everything about their roster not resting yeah. the laurels not that i'm mad or anything about the white Sox's <laughs> poor performance this offseason it's it, it, i don't care listen man any white Sox fan that tells you that they were satisfied with this offseason by rick Hahn, they're lying to you you should not be happy with this craptacular team right now um there's no ex- anyway i don't want to go on <laughs> uh didi gregorius is available kevin newman who we just mentioned he sucks uh, so far <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the, the, the pickings are slim, but there's some pickings there. So, I, I mean, Kevin Newman did bat like 500 in spring training. So once again, another guy what who doing, crushed man? it in spring training. It, no, it was like insane. It wasn't like 500 over four at bats. He had like 17 hits, 17 or 18 hits in like 12 games. Sean, it's just practice, man. It's, it's just practice. Just, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, who else? Uh, okay. So we mentioned the uh, Tim Anderson. I know there's other guys that you want uh, Trent to Grisham about. injury news. Trent Grisham is uh supposed to be back tomorrow so um he will take back over the top of the Padres lineup um and if Tati stays on the injured list uh you know he was batting second a lot uh with mainly Grisham leading off and then when Grisham got hurt they moved Pham to lead off so that second spot in the lineup might be fluid with San Diego with Tati's out so his replacement were you know if we're saying Kim's his replacement I don't think Kim will bat second you know right off the bat that might go to Tommy Pham, or yeah. uh, they might move Manny Machado up. So we'll, we'll see. It's a great problem to have. That's, yeah, that's... It's, a, it's a great lineup. So, yeah, if you can lose Fernando Tatis out of a lineup and still have a great lineup, you, you know it's a good lineup. <laughs> yeah. Again, not something you could say about the White Sox. Uh, Cody Bellinger out with a calf injury until April 10th. Uh, that seems to be a temporary problem there. But if you're in a daily league, you're probably pulling your hair out because you're looking for replacements. Yeah. Um, should we go over some replacements, or is it just too short term? No, that, that's too short. I, unless he gets delayed coming back. Cause I feel like he got stepped on, like he was running to first base and he got stepped on or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it I was. I don't remember either, but uh, I mean, the Dodgers don't think he's going to be out too long. So we'll take yeah. their word for it. Now here's a name I wanted to talk to you about, uh, unless you mentioned him already um, as I was frantically looking at other things, Eliezer Hernandez. Uh, he was supposed to get two starts uh, either this week or next week. And that ain't happening anymore because he has a bicep injury. And he's on the injured list, I believe. Yeah, so that Marlins pitching depth is really getting tested early. Uh, you know, Sixto Sanchez was sent down to the minors because they didn't think they were going to have to use him while yeah. pitching down at the alternate site. He complained of some shoulder soreness, which is something that Sixto Sanchez has dealt with before in his career. So they're going to take it easy. Uh, Eliezer Hernandez was supposed to be, you know, that number four guy in the lineup or in the rotation. Um, but now he's out. I, I believe Nick Nider made the start in replace of um, Hernandez today against the Mets, but he had a good spring, but he's just had a very mixed track record of he doesn't really miss bats. So kind of a boring fantasy profile, high ERA, n- nothing to really look at. Uh, Max Kepler, what happened to him? I I, I have him on my on the Fantrax League, and all of a sudden he's in- – He was removed from the game today after getting a base hit. I saw somebody make a joke or something that he got pulled for smallpox i don't know what? it was so i don't know they said he got a base hit and he got the first base and they pulled him out of the game so all right um maybe, maybe it is COVID related i don't know or smallpox related yeah. or <laughs> polio related it's like, you know anyway, yeah it's huh? exit thursday's game against the mariners in the sixth after being checked by a trainer undisclosed day to day that's, that's scary. it that's scary. <laughs> the ones that you don't see are they always the ones that scare you the most uh Dylan Batances with a shoulder injury uh not that he was anything you know it's whatever for the Mets but yeah he's uh it's it's starting to pile on for Batances with the Mets and I can hear the jokes about the Mets uh (laughs) just being a curse for these pitchers but (laughs) the Yankees sold us damaged goods I'm just gonna the Yankees are ruining baseball you you didn't trade you guys didn't trade for him that's no but the, the Yankees got rid of him and then we're like, oh, yeah, he's perfectly fine. Did you mention Aaron Judge uh, at the beginning of your spiel there? Uh, no, I did not. But he, but he's uh, they, 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 <laughs> they, but Aaron Boone was very, being very coy about it, saying that he wasn't hurt. Um, okay. It was just rest and that he was dealing with soreness and he wanted to give him a day off 
before the day off. I I don't know. It's I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> and uh, you know, we there's a lot of guys. Uh, you know, we'll be here forever. But let's just uh, uh, the last guy I want to mention was James Paxson. He's out for the year. Uh, yeah, that uh, can't catch a break. And we we thought, hey, he's going to be in a six man rotation. Maybe it'll help him keep him healthy. Nope. And uh, nope. So uh, somebody put out a stat on Twitter. I wish I could go back and find it and credit the person. But it was uh, James Paxton now will have missed two weeks or more in a, in nine straight seasons. Jesus Christ. I mean, it sucks. It's, it sucks. He had all this potential. We talked about him in, uh, uh, back in March about how great James Paxton was with the Mariners at one point uh, in terms of uh, – And the velocity was back in spring training. That was a, a big worry that people had over him with yeah. the Yankees last year was there was no velo. The velo was gone, and it seemed to be back, but I guess it came back too fast. You know what it was? It's like the velocity went back, but, yeah, but at what cost? Yeah, everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Sean, it's a good place to stop. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday to probably talk some more replacement players, but, uh, you know, uh, we just wanted to recap the first week of the season as uh, – um, yeah, man, it seems like we, we've been gone for forever now, but no, it's yeah, only it was, been a week. It was, but... Yeah, it was only a week. It was weird. It was, it was weird waking up on Sunday and being like, oh, I, I, no, no show today. <laughs> Lucky you. I, I woke up at my usual time because somebody wouldn't let me sleep on that uh, overnight. Oh. So, uh, she, yeah, uh, <laughs> she's her name starts with a P and it ends with an off. <laughs> Piss off. Anyway, um, no, she's a cutie, uh, my baby. Anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope you uh, found this informative and entertaining, and hopefully uh, we are able to help you uh, kind of uh, weather the injury storm that's beating the hell out of us. (laughs) No, it's it's now, man. We're in the eye (laughs) of the storm. Uh, And the injuries uh, are getting everybody. But, you know, luckily we do have a bunch of resources to try to help you guys out. Um, And we'll go more into detail on Sunday when we get back into a regularly scheduled program. So for uh, Sean Flannery, I am Felipe. We will see you soon. Have a good one.